Once again, another child has been failed by the foster system. On November 2015, 27-year-old Jennifer Rosenbaum called police when her two-year-old foster daughter, Layla Daniel, began choking on chicken. The dispatcher walked Jennifer through the Heimlich maneuver to try and save Layla's life, but it was too late. When Layla's body was examined, it was clear that she was starved. She had bruises, abrasions, 11 injuries to her torso, and an injury to her liver consistent with punching her abdomen. And according to the pathologist, Layla's pancreas was also separated in two pieces. But Jennifer's defense argued that the injuries were actually from the hammock maneuver. Layla's older sister, who was four years old, was also fostered by Jennifer and her husband, Joseph, but she was immediately taken away after Layla's death. But what's crazy about this story and could have possibly saved Layla's life is that this couple never turned in the correct paperwork and only went through a quick screening process to qualify to be foster parents. But also, I question how family services failed to notice the bruises and cuts on Layla's body during their visits. Jennifer was charged as the primary abuser while Joseph was accused of pretty much turning a blind eye. She was sentenced to life in prison and Joseph faces up to 30 years on second degree murder. Cannibal facts that'll eat at you for days. If you thought Jeffrey Dahmer was picky for not eating people with tattoos, Venezuelan serial killer Dorangel Vargas, who ate 10 people, didn't like his victims to be overweight because he thought that they contained too much cholesterol. On Thanksgiving Day 1991, 23-year-old Omaima Nelson stabbed her sugar daddy William before carving him up and cooking his head in a deep fryer and eating him for dinner. In the 1970s, Jorge Negromonte also known as the Brazilian Sweeney Todd, would bake his victims into pies before selling them to local townsfolk. After murdering and eating his classmate in 1981, Issei Sagawa was released from prison because of a loophole in Japanese law. Since then, he's actually profited off the crime, writing books, appearing on talk shows, and starring in adult films where he bites his fellow co-stars. In 2001, a man named Armin Maiwis posted an ad on a website called Cannibal Cafe looking for someone to be killed and eaten. A German engineer named Bern Brandis volunteered, and after photos and videos of the incident were posted online, Armin was sent to jail, where today, he's a vegetarian. In 1904, a Swedish sailor named Carl Pedersen shipwrecked on an island inhabited by cannibals. He was captured and taken to a local king whose daughter actually fell in love with him. The two then got married, had nine kids, and Carl became the new king. Madagascar's parliament has just passed a law that allows for castration if you're found guilty of a child. The new law, which still needs final approval by the president, sees those guilty of children under 13 receive surgical castration. And for cases against children between 14 and 17, they would receive chemical castration. This would be in addition to sentences of up to life in prison. Madagascar is taking this stance after they saw an increase in child but some human rights groups have criticized the law, calling it inhumane and degrading, and said it was not in line with the island's constitutional laws. So the question is, do you think that the president should approve this law or not? This is probably the craziest body cam footage I've ever seen. This officer's name is Jesse Hernandez and he opened fire at an unarmed arrested man when he mistaken acorns falling from a tree as gunshots. On November 12, 2023, Jesse and another police officer were called to a home in Florida by a woman who claimed that her boyfriend Marquise Jackson had stolen her vehicle. Marquise was arrested and put in the back of Jesse's cop car, but moments later, Officer Jesse is seen walking back to his vehicle when he heard a pop, which he thought was a gunshot. Officer Jesse shouted, shots fired, and began shooting multiple times at his vehicle, which Marquise was sitting in. The officer also also yelled that he was hit even though he wasn't. The officer can also be heard slurring his words when trying to communicate with the other officer. Luckily, Marquise was not hit and it turns out that he did not have a weapon on him. What the officer heard was an acorn falling from the tree and hitting his car. Eventually, on December 4th, 2023, the officer resigned from his position. Disturbing facts you didn't want to hear, part two. Many doctors say that the most common last words they hear are, I don't feel so good. 
Most laugh tracks you hear in TV shows were recorded in the 1950s, meaning that the people you hear laughing are probably dead. During the French Revolution, it was said that the guillotine had to be used multiple times to get the job done. The reason that planes shut off their lights right before they land is so that passengers' eyes can adjust to the dark just in case there's a crash. This is so if the power goes out during the crash landing, they can better find an escape route. This man murdered his wife and three children before turning the gun on himself. He survived his attempt to take his own life and this is the mugshot that came out of this. Meet Charles Robert Gillard Sr. In May of 2022, Charles snapped. At the end of May in 2022, at around 2.30 p.m., the police were called to this residence in Michigan. When they arrived, they were met with an extremely gruesome scene. They found the bodies of a mother, a father, and three children. All had been shot and nobody had any idea what had happened. The children were identified as Ronald Joshua and Don Gillard. They were only three, four, and six years old. And the woman whose body they found was 40-year-old Don Gillard. The first responders who responded to this crime scene have gone on the record and stated that it was the most gruesome thing they'd ever come across. The first responders, in fact, had no words to offer upon seeing the scene. It was truly unlike anything they had ever witnessed. So I haven't been able to find any more information about what exactly led up to this incident, but it's known that on that day, Charles Gillard took a gun, murdered his wife and three children, and then tried to take his own life, but failed miserably. He survived his own unaliving attempt, spent weeks in the hospital recovering, and now he's going to prison. I'm honestly glad he lived so that he could be sent to prison because this man really, really needs to suffer. Terrifying apps you should never download, part one. Up first, we have Camster Pro. Now, from an outside perspective, it actually looks quite cool and completely harmless. Now, when downloaded on an iPhone, it gives you an option to connect to a network of iPhones, which will connect you to security footage, MacBook cameras, iPhone cameras. So you can essentially watch other people. That's already strange, but it gets worse. What isn't told to you is when you download this app, you are unknowingly giving other people free reign to look through your device's camera. Meaning other app users from around the world could be staring at you through your iPhone and you wouldn't have a clue. Now share this with a friend to make sure they never download this app because this could legitimately save their life. Elon! Did this man kill his girlfriend in a fight over how to chop onions? Marcia Linsky was a 64 year old woman living in Indiana. She was a former defense attorney and was dating 60 year old Charles Michael Calvert. On the 3rd of February, 2014, police received a telephone call from Charles. It was around 8.30 that night and he stated that his girlfriend is no longer with us. He claimed that they were having an argument and Marcia confronted him with a knife. He allegedly stated on the phone, she came at me and I responded inappropriately. I'm going to spend the night in jail. Emergency services arrived and found Marcia on the ground lying face down. She had a huge gash in her head and neck and she was found in the kitchen of the house and the area was completely disheveled. There were knives in the kitchen with blood on and there was food everywhere. It appeared that a crock pot had been smashed on the floor and there was pieces of ham and broken glass all over the place. Charles reportedly told officers that he was cutting onions and his girlfriend told him he was doing it incorrectly. Charles reported that Marcia shoved the crock pot towards him and she came at him with a knife and he also grabbed a knife. Conveniently, he said that he did not remember the details. It's reported that Charles was found with dried blood on his hands. Now, the police officers and coroner stated that they felt that the knives on the floor appeared to be staged as they appeared to be placed next to the victim's body neatly. The largest serrated knife was covered in blood and the other knife appeared to be relatively clean. Despite Charles's claim over what the argument was about, there didn't actually appear to be any chopped onion anywhere. There were also shoe scuff marks on a different place of the house aside from the kitchen, indicating there was a struggle in a different room. Charles is currently being held in jail. Disturbing facts that will creep UTF out. You are always six minutes away from death. Breathing resets that clock. 
3M is known as the Devil's Hour because it is said that during this hour the veil between our world and the paranormal world is at its thinnest. Lapple divide is when you have self-destructive thoughts for a split second. For instance, picturing yourself swerving into oncoming traffic or jumping off of a bridge, although you never really would do it. Jamais vu is the opposite of déjà vu. This is when you feel like you're seeing or experiencing something for the first time despite rationally knowing that you've seen or done it before. Scary, haunting facts that'll keep you up at night. While sleeping we see ghosts in our dreams and suddenly wake up with fear and think it was just a bad dream. According to paranormal experts it is the virtual reality. They're real spirits communicating with you but our soul rejects and wakes us up for safety. That is why bad dreams are never completed. In a deep sleep, if you often see your dead relative or friend in your dream, it means their restless soul is actually in your room right now, roaming around you and trying to contact you. According to paranormal investigators, spirits are most active at night and most exists in cold air-conditioned rooms. They look and stare at you all night. If you have difficulty trying to fall asleep without any reason, it's a spirit somewhere in your corner staring at you. We actually have a sense to detect a paranormal entity around us. If you feel shivered all of a sudden it means a spirit just passed through you. If you're home alone and feel like someone is staring at you but find no one after looking. 99% of the time it's a spirit, they want your attention. I passed away trying to put a TV in my stomach. Hello, I am Poe, one of the Teletubbies. You know who I am, but you don't know my dark history. Before all the sunshine and happiness, there was darkness and loneliness. We were four children stuck in a Bulgarian mental facility they called La La Land, where they experimented on psychotic children. They isolated us into dark rooms. La La, the yellow tubby, was a child with a facial disfigurement, making her smile all the time. Tinky Winky, the purple tubby, was a deaf child that was tied to a fence outside and suffered frostbite. Dipsy was a malnourished child that was constantly sick. And me, Po, I fell into a fire when I was young. Our only source of comfort in our rooms was our little televisions. But as part of an experiment, they told us they were going to take them away. We didn't want that to happen, so we came up with the idea to put them into our stomachs. They were too big to swallow, so we tried to cut them open and put the television inside. But we didn't make it. Remember where we came from. Remember our suffering. This celebrity cruise's youth counselor admitted to molesting multiple children on the cruise ship. This is Chris John Pantinio Castor, who's also known as CJ. He's a Philippine national and he was on a cruise on December when he committed the worst offense you can commit. So on November 27th, the cruise ship returned back to the shore in Florida. A six-year-old girl had been handed over to the cruise ship staff to be a part of the youth program, and when her parents picked her up from the cruise ship, she had a disturbing story to share. She basically stated that the man known as CJ had played with her private parts while she was playing video games. And she even told investigators afterwards, this is so sad, that he touched her where the pee comes out. So when the authorities actually arrested CJ, they were completely shocked when he admitted not only to molesting the six-year-old girl, but to molesting multiple other children on board the cruise ship as well. CJ stated that he knew where the security cameras were on the cruise ship, so he attempted to hide his molestation as well as he could. Which apparently he did because none of the security cameras actually showed him committing these horrible acts. But he told the authorities he had assaulted three other children, he had made skin-to-skin -skin contact with them, and now he's facing federal charges in Florida. Now, I really hope this guy gets punished and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but as we know, and especially here on my TikTok, this doesn't always happen, so we can only hope for the best. And this guy definitely has a one-way ticket straight to hell. In light of the Russia nukes in space news, this is what would happen on Earth if all satellites suddenly disappeared. Global TV and radio stations would immediately be cut and disrupt international news broadcasts. Almost all travel by air and sea would grind to a halt, causing chaos in airports and harbors around the world. A lot of stoplights would be thrown out of sync, causing disruption in cities. And within hours, most of the world's traffic would be still. But the worst is yet to even happen. Countless systems and machines like air conditioning, factory 
factory assembly lines, card readers, the stock exchange, and even the systems that keep track of financial transactions, all heavily rely on super accurate satellite-based timing systems. And if these break down, it would be catastrophic. Not only would people be unable to make cash withdrawals and electronic payments, but many food supply chains and factories which produce essential products like medicine would soon break down. This would quickly lead to mass panic and a state of emergency would likely be declared. Global business would grind to a halt and governments would struggle to cope. Many electricity and even water grids which rely on satellites would eventually shut down. And with the failure of satellite communications, soldiers, ships and aircraft would be cut from their commanders and vulnerable to attack. And during all the chaos, world leaders would struggle to talk to each other and diffuse mounting global tensions. You'll be happy to hear though that we wouldn't actually lose the internet immediately so we could all talk about our problems on here. Because most of the internet's infrastructure relies on copper cable and fiber optics. But eventually we'd lose that too. Now it's important to note that there is almost a 0% chance of this all happening. Because even if there was nukes detonated in space, it's unlikely that it could take out all of the thousands of satellites currently circling Earth. These are the worst of the worst videos on the internet explained, and today we're talking about Joey Fish Arms. Before I begin, this video is a very hard watch, and I don't recommend looking for it. The video that I'm about to explain is under one and a half minutes long, and as the video plays, you see a steel barred jail cell, which looks like it's holding several men. It's hard to see what's going on, but it appears multiple men are straining and holding down one man. On the outside of the cell are three inmates, two are holding what appears to be thick wooden sticks or metal pipes. It's difficult to tell because of the quality. It's hard to explain, but the man who is being held down has his arms extended through the prison bars. Picture yourself in a jail cell and sticking your arms through the bars and extending your arms out as far as they could. One of the men outside of the cell is holding a rope that is tied to the victim's arm and he is pulling it tightly so that the victim's arm is completely outstretched and straight. The two men with the metal pipes then start hitting the victim's outstretched arm. After every hit, you see lumps appear on the victim's arm almost instantly. They are hitting him so hard and often that lacerations appear. The screaming from the victim gets more and more intense. After several strikes, the man holding the rope reduces the tension and shakes the victim's arm. You can see that he has several bones broken in his forearm. His arm is partially floppy at this point also. It's worth noting that a bed sheet has been placed and pulled over the victim's head in order to reduce the screaming. Once again, they strike the same arm several more times. The man holding the rope then unties the arm as the prisoner pulls it back into the cell. His forearm is completely floppy at this point and he struggles to even pull it through the cell bars. And sadly, it doesn't get any better from here. They then take the other arm, tie it up, and pull through the cell bars once again so the arm is outstretched. They then strike the arm extremely hard multiple times. Despite the loud nature of the inmates and their attempt to muffle the victim's screams, you can still hear them. The sound the metal bar makes when it hits the victim's arm is just sickening, and the screams make it even worse. At 1 minute and 26 seconds into the video, it finally concludes. This is a terrible watch, and there's little to no backstory behind it. But many speculate it was just a normal gang attack, but others say this was a punishment for stealing in prison. Which makes sense, as they were incapacitating his arms. Regardless, it's an insanely sickening video, and whatever you do, never ever go searching for it. This 19-year-old murdered his own father in an exorcism gone wrong. This is 19-year-old Jack Callahan from Duxbury, Massachusetts. So Jack's father, Scott, was an alcoholic. And at some point, Jack became convinced that his father's alcoholism was driven by demons. And Jack felt like the only way he could cure his father was by dunking his head in a local pond to perform an exorcism. So on the night of the exorcism, Jack and his father were picked up by an Uber driver in Boston, Massachusetts. The Uber driver later stated that Scott Callahan, Jack's father, seemed very inebriated. You see, in the past, Scott had suffered a traumatic brain injury, and he had a history of mental health and substance abuse issues. So according to his defense attorney, Jack's father, Scott, had checked himself out of an assisted care facility that night, and he had gone to a bar and gotten drunk, and this is what sent Jack over the edge. Jack went to Boston to go retrieve his father because his mother said that he couldn't come back and stay with her, but Jack's mother ended up calling 911 that night because Jack returned home in a frantic state, and Scott was missing. 
When police interviewed Jack, he said he had no idea what happened to his father. He said that his dad was drunk when he met with him. He started beating him, but then he blacked out and walked back into his home soaking wet. But that's what led investigators to the Island Creek Pond in Crocker Park. Apparently, that's where the Uber driver had dropped off Scott and Jack. When authorities went and searched the pond, they discovered Scott Callahan's body submerged in the water next to some suitcases. So Jack later told investigators that he had gotten into an altercation with his father near the pond. According to Jack, Scott had begun to strike him, so Jack took Scott over to the water and began performing an exorcism. Jack held his father on his back, cradled his head, and dipped him in and out of the water. Jack said he kept doing this, trying to exercise this spirit until his father just stopped breathing. Jack, when interviewed by police officers, told them this. I'm going to read this quote to you. I left him there to decide. You can come to heaven with me or to hell. I think he chose hell. Jack also told the authorities that he believed his father's body was being possessed by an evil demonic spirit that he called Dirty Dan. And he said that doing this baptism exorcism was in an effort to get rid of this demon. Investigators claimed that this was one of the most confusing, disturbing, and bizarre cases they had ever worked. And to this day, there's no solution in this case. The trial is still pending. This young man was murdered and eaten by his friends, and this is a massive trigger warning. What I'm about to explain happened in Bangladesh on August 28th, 2023. The boy on the right who is taking the selfie's name is Shabli, and he was the victim of this disturbing crime, and everyone else you see are the killers. But Shabli was the manager of the farm they all worked on, and one day they all got into a very big argument, and a couple days after the argument, these so-called friends did the unthinkable. They all went to where Shabli was at and then kidnapped him and asked him for money from his parents. Shabli's parents ended up giving them money and after doing so, the kidnappers assured them that Shabli would be returned home safely by morning, but that did not happen. They ended up killing Shabli and then cooking his flesh and meat and eating him because Shabli saw their faces. The Bangladesh police interrogated a number of suspects, one of whom confessed and showed them the area where Shabli had been killed. Police searched the area but found only fragments of Shabli's bones as well as his skull. On September 10th, 2023, Yumung Ching Marma was arrested as a suspected mastermind behind the crime, and the following day when he was taken to the crime scene, an angry mob of villagers surrounded the police vehicle and then savagely lynched him to death. Yumung Ching Marma had killed Shibli one day after the kidnapping, before even contacting the parents, which just makes this even more disturbing. He then completely dismembered the body, separated the flesh from the bones, and then spread it both throughout the forest in order to eliminate all traces of the crime. Now, many believe and thought that the suspects had confessed to having cooked and eaten the flesh to reduce the retrievable evidence even further. However, on October 1st, the police denied this, declaring that while the flesh of the body was thrown apart, there was no information on meat eating. But honestly, who will ever really know? I can't believe that friends would do this to each other over some money and an argument. It's absolutely sickening and may Shibli rest in peace.